My name is Patrick Holden and I'm Chief Executive of the Sustainable Food Trust, the organisation which is hosting this Countdown to COP26 TEDx Food and Farming event. We're here on my farm in West Wales. I came here actually when I was 22, 48 years ago, with a community group from London, since when I've been doing my best to produce food working in harmony with nature. So it's been my privilege to observe the impacts of my farming actions on this piece of landscape, 300 acres in West Wales, over a prolonged period of time. And during that period, I've been doing my best to build soil fertility, to purify the water, which we drink and the animals drink and goes into the water system, to minimize my greenhouse gas emissions, to attend to the nutrient flows according to the principles of the circular economy, uh, to reduce my energy and resource use and general use of outside non-renewable inputs, to pay attention to the crops and the livestock under my care, and of course, to enhance the social and cultural impacts to produce healthy, nutrient-dense food working in harmony with nature. But despite my firm belief that the impacts have been positive, I haven't been keeping regular and accurate records of the impact on soil, on water, on energy and resource use, on emissions, on nutrients, crop, livestock husbandry, biodiversity, social and cultural impacts, and above all, the quality of the food we produce, its nutrient density and its capacity to promote the health of the people who eat it. And I'm in very good company. I know there are hundreds of thousands of farmers throughout the world now who would like their farming practices in the future to be part of the solution in terms of addressing the critical threats of climate change and biodiversity restoration. However, their capacity to do that will depend on the development of an internationally harmonised framework of categories and units of measurement which will enable us to work together as a farm community globally to give the political leaders who will be attending the COP26 the information they need to enable our farmers to do that job and be paid for it. I'm personally convinced about the positive impacts of this farming system. I believe that if we farm in harmony with nature, we can build soil, reduce emissions, recycle the nutrients, promote the health of the crops and the animals under our care, employ more people in a meaningful way, and at the end of it, produce enough food to feed a hungry world. Because I'm here on the farm, and we've been directly involved with trialling the framework of categories and metrics. I'm now going to take you on a short walk round the farm looking at the impact of some of our farming practices. The first category is soil. We've been doing our best to produce high quality food whilst at the same time building soil fertility and here's how. To build healthy soil we use crop rotations we return the nutrients in the form of animal manures, sometimes composted, and we avoid the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. We're doing our best to build water quality. We use as much as possible from springs which are fed by the annual rainfall. Regarding biodiversity, we want to measure it in two ways. Firstly, the biodiversity which can coexist with a farming system which is based on sustainable principles and that means the wild plants which are existing in the pastures, the birds, the small mammals, the insects and of course the earthworms. Our agricultural biodiversity is based on using native breeds wherever possible, allowing them to breed in a closed system so that they become adapted to the place over time and in the case of crops using the native varieties and restoring them uh, to the populations which used to exist perhaps a century ago. Regarding greenhouse gas emissions, we're doing our best to avoid them, although we do still use quite a lot of fossil fuel energy. We don't use nitrogen fertiliser and we've covered our slurry store to make sure that we reduce the emissions coming from the animal manures. We are doing our best to cut down our fossil fuel consumption 
but we have installed solar PV and solar thermal on the roofs of our farm buildings. Regarding social and cultural impacts, we are very proud that we are employing a growing number of local people. And we're also in the process, as you see behind me, in developing the farm as a cultural and educational centre. We believe that the future of farms needs to involve people coming to visit, whether it's school children, farmers learning better practices, or social and cultural events. And we hope that this threshing barn will provide a stage for that. This is our milking herd of 80 cows. Uh, all of them, or just about all of them, are descended from the original herd of 30 animals, which we purchased in 1973, 22 of them from Scotland and eight from Sussex. And on the left here are the dairy cows, mostly in milk, and on the right are the in-calf heifers. And what is interesting, I think, about choosing native breeds and then allowing them to be bred to get used to the farm over time is that they adapt epigenetically to the unique ecosystem of this place, the climate, the soils, and everything about it. And if you allow animals and plants to adapt in that way, you gain the maximum health benefits. Our aim with this dairy system is to try to feed all the cow's diet from grass, clover, silage, hay, or grain grown on this farm. And we're not quite there. We're probably all the way there with our forage, our hay, our grazing, and our silage, and about 50% of the way there with our grain. We grow oats and peas as part of the rotation. And what we find is that the cattle prefer to eat homegrown feed, and as a result of uh, looking after them and loving them, they get really healthy, as you can see. I'm standing in front of a big pile of semi-rotted manure in a building which keeps the rain off the muck, which is taken from these buildings where we have our young stock bedded down on rush hay or straw. And this is a crucial part of the nutrient cycle of this farm because we try to look after the manure, minimize leaching, and then put it back on the fields at the right time of year. In a way, one can understand a farm as a managed ecosystem, farming in harmony with nature and producing a genuine surplus of food without diminishing the natural capital and the biodiversity of the farming system. And I think one can learn a lot about that by looking at a farm pond, because all life is there, and yet there needs to be a degree of intervention to keep it all in balance. And we manage this pond by regularly removing the water weeds, which otherwise would prevent the amphibians from living here. I'm now going to hand over to Adele Jones, Deputy CEO of the Sustainable Food Trust, and she will give us an update on recent developments with the metric project. Our mission is to create a common global farm metric for measuring the impact of agriculture all across the world. And we came to this project for two main reasons. Firstly, farmers are already subjected to multiple different audits each year, be it their certification or labelling requirements for compliance reasons, carbon footprinting tools that their retail contracts might require them to complete. And whilst these are all well and good, they're all measuring very similar things in a slightly different way. And that's incredibly confusing for farmers on the ground. The other reason for coming to this project was through our work in what we call true cost accounting in food and farming. And that basically means measuring the hidden costs, be it positive or negative, of global agriculture. However, whilst true cost accounting could be a discipline which totally transforms the business case for food and farming, it's very difficult to start monetizing those impacts until you have a common means of measuring them in the first place. And that measurement framework needs to start on the ground with farmers. This global farm metric could be the toolkit which informs all future decision making about food farming and supply chains. Of course, it could be used by farmers on the ground to make continuous improvement of their natural and social capital. It could be used by governments as the backbone to all future support schemes, which is what we're suggesting to DEFRA and the devolved nations in the UK, that this global farm metric could form the basis of an annual sustainability assessment that allows DEFRA and ultimately the Treasury to understand 
the delivery of public goods over time. It could also be used by food companies to inform their future buying policies and of course increasing the transparency of their supply chains. It could be used by investors to inform all future investment decisions. And ultimately, it could also be used by citizens and consumers when they're purchasing food to understand the relative sustainability of those products in the marketplace. This Global Farm Metric project is something we've been pursuing for the last five or so years with farms of all shapes and sizes around the UK. Although it will continue to evolve, the framework currently includes 11 categories of assessment and three key indicators under each of those 11. The current categories are productivity, soil, water, air and climate, biodiversity, energy and resource use, nutrient management, plant and crop health, animal husbandry, and of course, social and human capital. Although we've been working on this project a number of years, we started to realise that if it was ever going to be truly successful, it needed to become much bigger than the Sustainable Food Trust. And that's why we're so pleased to be working as part of a dynamic coalition to take this work forward. Through the Global Farm Metric Coalition, we've now set up a steering committee, a series of working groups and a secretariat to work together on firstly agreeing the component parts of the metric and then understanding how it can be applied in different scenarios. We believe the Global Farm Metric could be a key driver of change. It could be the toolkit for every farmer, government and company around the world to drive towards more sustainable, regenerative food and farming systems. But we need to work together to make that happen.